changes. So let's take a look at Cloud Plus and the sketching tools. And let me do a little bit of uh, cleanup here. I'm going to close out of this set. And let's pop open a floor plan. All right. So with Cloud Plus, you now have the ability to take your traditional text box and your traditional cloud and combine it into Cloud Plus. So see under the command bar markup tab, cloud, you now have Cloud Plus. Shortcut key is K. K for uh, what I like to remember is K for key. Uh, this is now my most favorite command. We kick off cloud, we hover into the view here, uh, left click and drag, we get the cloud, but look at this, there is our text box callout, and now uh, it has that leader that's intelligent, a single click, and I can say revise uh, door locations by typing on the keyboard, click outside. Now I have that one uh, uh, cloud plus markup added to the document. You'll see afterwards you can adjust the text box or you can move the entire object it shows up as one item in the markups list. So it's one item, it's not two items or multiple grouped items. And then within, with regards to the properties, what you'll see is you now have the ability to change the appearance properties for the cloud, as well as the appearance properties for the text box. So you have a lot of flexibility in defining exactly what you want that Cloud Plus markup tool uh, to look and feel like. All right. Moving on with the markup tools, you'll notice just to the right of Shapes and Cloud Plus, we have Sketch. So this has been probably one of the most demanded uh, tools uh, that I'm familiar, uh, familiar with. A lot, of, um, a lot of people I speak, speak with have been asking for this for a long time. So what Sketch tools allow you to do is draw to scale. So now on your document, uh, with it calibrated, you can now sketch polygons, rectangles, ellipses, and polylines to a scale and then have that scale obey your calibration. So as an example, let's say I'm gonna play architect for example and I wanna drop in a rectangular uh, table in this conference room, kick off the command, single click, you now get this um, shadowy uh, dialog box that follows you around. So I'm gonna move over here. You can manually uh, move and set your values or you can explicitly type directly in there. So let's say I want that table to be six feet by four feet and I'll hit enter and then voila, I've got a six by four table sitting in this conference room um, that is accurate and listen to the scale. And just for fun, I always like to go over here to the linear measurement and show you there's four feet, there is six feet. Uh, inversely, we could go in here and do an ellipse or a circle. So let's say maybe I'm playing architect again, want to do some um, clearances within this room. I could do a quick circle here, maybe it's uh, two and a half feet or a five foot radius. And now, just like that, I'm going to use the length measurement, and you'll see that, sure enough, that's a five feet, uh, five foot uh, diameter circle. And now I can use that to maybe do some quick uh, design checking. Further along with these sketch tools, um, let's say maybe you wanted to identify an area, maybe a staging, a construction area, maybe a building addition you want to propose. I was going to go in here and use the polyline. I'll click on uh, this item. Um, maybe we want to go out. 40 feet at zero, maybe we want to go down uh, 30 feet at negative 90, so I'm just hitting 30, enter, and then maybe we want to work our way to the left, back at 40, enter, and then enter again, and you'll see it will now close out that polyline. So just like that, I've entered in a markup that has been sketched to scale and accurate. Uh, in addition, all of these um, sketch tools are just actually measurements in hiding is the way I like to describe them. So if I jump over here to the properties tab, you'll notice that you can, just like all the other measurements, you can show a caption. So in this case, that polyline is actually a perimeter measurement. If I go and grab that table and click on show caption there, you'll see that it's actually a area measurement in the disguise. Now working with this sketch tool, and also introducing another feature, which is the dynamic tool set scaler. I want to just give you a, a practical example. So what dynamic tool set scaler allows you to do is take tools that are in the tool chest, set a scale, and now those tools will then scale accordingly based off the document calibration. Um, and you'll see it's going to automatically resize. So let's do this. Let me open up this crane sketch, which is at eighth scale. 
and I'm going to open up a site plan that's at 1 inch equals 20 scale and just show you an example of how the sketching tools as well as the tool chest scaler feature works. So in this particular example, let me do a little bit more setup here. I just want to split the pages. We want to put the architectural 8 scale on the left. We're going to put the site plan on the right. And what you'll see is maybe in this scenario you're in the construction space, you're defining a crane with the outriggers, and maybe you're doing staging and you're trying to uh, indicate areas where you want to set up your crane and then ha have an active radius for the crane boom to work in. So what I've done is using that scaling feature, so you'll see here, click on the blue here for the tool set, go to set scale, here's that new feature. I've set my scale to be 1 inch equals 20, and then I defined and added that particular markup using the sketch tools or any other markup tools to the tool chest. Now what you'll notice is as I drop this in on the eighth size sheet, I get my hydraulic crane here with its working radius. But now if I move over here to the one inch equals 20 sheet, you'll then see that tool dynamically scale to one inch equals 20 and now resize. So here I can single click and place it there, go back to the tool chest, place it over here, uh, and you'll see it's listening and abiding by and then automatically scaling. And I'm just gonna unsplit the pages here, zoom in, and I'll just show you, just so there's no mystery, all this is, is just a markup. I'm gonna ungroup it, you'll see it's got a sketched circle and then a lot of lines and rectangles that have been defined. In this case, I defined the rectangle with the sketch tool to accurately give me the outline of the particular crane. Now, another workflow of looking at this is more from the architectural engineering side. So let me close out of this sheet here, close the sketch, and just give you another uh, example with the dynamic scaler. So in this uh, particular sheet, I've got lots of details here that are at different scale. The main sheet's at three-quarter scale, and we've got a half-inch scale over here at the top for this foundation plan. Uh, if I jump back to the tool chest, we go over and start detailing. Say we want to add a little bit more information to this retaining wall. Uh, perhaps it has some masonry sitting on the top. What you'll notice is this detail was defined at three-quarter scale, but if I hover in, you'll see it automatically resize there. See, as it, I'm outside the viewport, it listens to the viewport scale, it drops down, and then now I can place a piece of CMU up there, or in this case, maybe what we can do, um, maybe in this case, we're gonna do some sort of ledger angle out here. You'll notice that as I go from three-quarter scale to the half scale, it resizes, and then allows me to place the markup. In this case, let's just do a couple of more. Again, you'll see small or three-quarter, and then half. And then lastly, I'll just finish up and throw some brick up here. And again, you'll see the changing in the scale. All right, excellent. So switching gears with uh, some of them, or wrapping up some of the markup tools, I wanna to talk about Capture 2.0. Let me close out of this doc. Let me open up my Capture doc for you. And in this particular case, I'm doing a punch workflow. So all the colors you're seeing are uh, spaces, and I'm actually gonna talk about spaces enhancements next. Uh, but what you're also seeing is some capture icons here. So with each one of these uh, punch items, I've attached some uh, images, but I've also attached video. So with uh, Bluebeam Review 2015 and Capture 2.0, you can now include video within there. So I click on the item, browse through my list of pictures, and voila, here's a video that's been captured. In this particular case, I was using Bluebeam Review iPad, capture the video, save it, and then uh, put it on the document. I hit the play button here, and you can see I've got a, a quick 10 second video uh, that's defining the deficiency in this case, which is just uh, somebody's messy desk. Uh, the nice part about this is I can hit the add button to add in more video, add in more images. Um, some other nice features that Bluebeam's rolled into the capture uh, workflow is down in the markups list, a column has been added. So they've added capture. And what you'll now see is under this capture column, it you nicely identifies any markup that has capture information. And now I can easily see where they are, click on it and view um, not only the images, but also now uh, videos. So here's just a nice, lovely video of a door hinge. All right. In addition to the video within the markup, 
They've also added some summaries for capture. So under the PDF summary here, and also a new summary has been uh, included within Bluebeam Review 2015. So the first thing you'll notice is before I kick off these summaries, I just want to open up the thumbnail, run a quick PDF summary. You've got two items in here that allow you to include the capture media addendum. So it gives you a report as an addendum, and then also to attach the media as linked files. So really the benefit to this workflow is that you've got all this information, it's in the PDF, you can now send that PDF off to anyone else, there's no issues with them opening up in other uh, PDF based applications. So I'm going to hit OK. And now what you'll see is we've got our traditional markup summary report, all the markups. But then on the second page, here is the capture media summary, which gives you a snapshot plus all the columns and then you're seeing the images, also seeing the video. This is hyperlinked right to the attached video file, so I can click here, hit OK, and actually watch this on my media player, as well as it has attached the file. So if we go over to the properties, you can see the, those um, images and videos are attached into the PDF document. Again, really giving you uh, the flexibility of sending this document off to whoever needs it. Uh, I'm going to go in and actually delete these pages of that summary just so it's clear, and then go back into the markups list and just generate a capture summary. So if you're just looking for only uh, captured markups and a summary of those markups, you'll notice it will also give you the option to attach media and then exclude or listen to your filters, dictate the title uh, and the padding and the page size. I'll hit OK here. And what you'll see is it now creates its own separate document with the images and then the video, as well as all that information is attached. So it's viewable and attached in that document. All right, so that's Capture 